Howdy folks, it's Tall Turtle here and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. We're going to do leg three of the Discover Finland bush trip today. If you haven't watched the first two videos of this trip, I recommend you do that because no introduction today. Let's just jump right into it. All right, here we go. First, we're going to start by turning on our lights a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Bonk microphone, sorry. Repair and refuel and read about what we're doing and where we're going. All right, Vixer Romeo to Kilo Uniform. Only two POIs or one POI in the airport. That's it. Okay. Ah, take to the air again and fly north northeast for 36 nautical miles to Vemir Salami. Or, um, Vemir Salami. A small airport of the city of Kuopio on the northern end of Vanskanaskla Lake. And then right after that, well, sometime after that, you aim, <laughs> aim the X Club's nose. <laughs> X Cubs nose to the northwest and land at the Kuopio, Kuopio Airport. Okay, shouldn't be too bad, right? Right. Um, if you haven't watched other videos, I don't know why, but if you haven't, we do use autopilot for this. So we can sightsee and it's easier to make a video that way. We don't use the timer and all that. Been there, done that. Did that with the Nevada trip. It was exhausting. I did it. It was fine, but don't need to do it every time. All right, so let's see here. It's a.m., 8.01 a.m., local time. All right, so... We're looking for a small part of the city on the northern end of the lake. Okay. Let's put that away and bring up this and see if we can figure out what in the world we're talking about. So we're going to head this way. So there's the lake. And we're going to look for basically a city. Okay. And then off to the airport. Looks like it's a straight in approach. Okay. We will fly. Let the airplane fly itself. And then we'll... um take over to land. Very, very simple. I guess. I think I'm forgetting something, but not really. I mean, it is that simple. We'll zoom this out a little bit. I'll adjust the map when we're in there during sightseeing. I'm not going to take your time figuring this out. Actually, I just did, I think. Whatever. We'll worry about that later. Flight director using nav. We'll fly at 1,500 feet again. And that's what we'll keep using until... um. There's a problem with terrain or something. So 1,500 feet it is. Climbing at 600 feet per minute. Because that's just what I choose. It's not optimum. That's just what we do. All right. Um, That is it. So let's take a parking brake. Let's make sure the flaps are set. They are. Full throttle. It's going to tell us the autopilot or the co-pilot thing. And it's going to tell us the... um. Holy cow, there's a little bit of wind now. And my foot is kicking something under my desk. It's kicking power plug from my racing battle. Stop the brakes. Gears fixed. It'll tell us um, use back on track and then it'll tell us something else. Flaps coming in and that's a pretty good handoff for autopilot. There we go. It'll turn us and we're flying. It is that simple. It is that simple. We don't need to worry about much else. There you go. Looking out the window. That is super fun to do. Oh, look at that. Looking back at the airport and the lake. Little river there with trees under it <laughs> from the satellite imagery. Looking back this way, same thing. Maybe there's a sunken city under there. Anyway, autopilot's going to do its thing and we're going to fly for a while. I will, so there's a co-pilot thing. I'm going to set up our GPS to track where we need to go. So we're looking out for the city. And like usual, I'll give you some sightseeing. I'm going to cut down the trip with sightseeing. Cut some out, but you're not going to miss any of the scenery. I'll make sure from one jump to the next, you're not missing anything. So I will see you in a little bit.
All right, we're two minutes away from the little city we're supposed to look for, which is right here. And then the airport is right there. So let's look out the windows here and enjoy what we can before we get up to the city, which is in front of us. There was a great, gorgeous view of like a swamp, and I totally missed it. Getting in sightseeing because I was trying to set up the perfect sightseeing shot, and I missed the swamp. It's right out the window. It was amazing. So, I'm sorry, you just have to fly yourself, <laughs> and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Alright, that must be the city right there. I'm guessing we'll take out the drone in a second since they're flying over it, and then the airport is over there, maybe it's right there. It's too low to see the airport from this far away. That's the only negative about flying so low, but like we said before, ooh, let's do the barometer thing. Um, but like we said before in the previous legs, we're staying low just so we can actually see stuff. All we do fly over like four, six, seven thousand feet above and we're like, can't see anything. So we're staying low so we can check stuff out like that farmland right there. And um, that thing that looks like a dog or a squirrel, actually squirrel's head legs sticking his rear end up in its tail. That's what that looks like, a squirrel. And that's that lake I can't pronounce. That must be the little town under the nose. I'm guessing. I mean, that's where it said it was if you look at this. Um, that's where it says it is. So let's take out the drone. And see if we see a little town. Well, there's a highway, so it must be something significant. Yeah, that could be it. That could be the little town. Let's go under the plane, which is this way. I have my drone controls on my yoke and my rudders. That's why I can't control the plane when I'm doing the drone. Well, how fun would it be on those islands? All by yourself. Yep, there's a town, for sure. Let's just admire this for a moment. I like the idea of little islands, just because there aren't that many animals on them, probably, because animals at night freak me out. I do not like being in nature at night. It freaks me the heck out. So there we go, there's the town. Very gorgeous. You can see the docks and boats underwater, which they're going to fix in a later version, but I think it's hilarious. Alrighty, so let's see. We're going to let the autopilot take this for another moment or so. Then we get closer and we can spot the airport. We will hand fly. Um, I don't see the airport. Maybe that's it right there where I thought it was. Yeah, I think that's it, actually. I think I see a beacon or am I just making stuff up? I think I'm making stuff up. It has to be farther away than that. I mean, according to this, we're literally nose straight in. Right? I mean, look at that. But I don't see anything under the nose. Maybe it's, well, maybe it's way up there. Maybe it's way up there. I don't know. Let's do sightseeing for like 30, 40 seconds, and then we'll land this plane. Alright, literally straight in it says, there it is. So let's go autopilot before it turns us onto the next leg, because it will do that. It will turn us as though we're going to keep going. We don't want to do that, so let's get this thing ready to fly. Trim it way down for some reason, because autopilot doesn't affect my trim, I guess, in this airplane like it does in most. Most planes you can take it off autopilot, and it's a smooth handoff. This plane take out of, take it off autopilot, and just trim for like 40 knots or some crazy thing and point straight up. So anyway, we're going to fly straight in. No ATC in the bush trips. You just fly away and land. Well, look at that lone house in that big field. But yes, like I was saying, animals at night freak me out. 
I don't mind being in the city at night, even slightly dangerous cities at night, but nature at night? No way. No way. Scares me so much. I'm so scared of animals. I have no idea why. I'm not scared of, like dogs and cats. and I'm scared of wild animals. I don't know why. I don't have a history with them or anything, but um, camping freaks me out. Even if we're like camping just outside of the city, I'm scared of, like bear attacking us and deer finding us and attacking us. Although I don't think deer scare people. Stuff like that. It all freaks me out. Scariest moment I had. Was on, well, also one of the best moments I had was when we were driving back from Denver to Minneapolis in one shot without stopping except for like the bathroom. And I'm just three in the morning in the middle of Iowa, middle of nowhere. My kid just woke up with like night tears, so I pulled the minivan over and I got out. And it was so dark, I saw the Milky Way with my bare eyes, which I've always wanted to see. And that was amazing. But I was so petrified of an animal coming up behind me, scooping me up and eating me, that I was just, I could barely like control my arms and get the door open for my kid. And, and I was up against the minivan running with lights on, right? So an animal wouldn't have come up to that, but I was so scared of that happening. It was like the scariest 45, 50 seconds of my life. But I got to see the Milky Way, so it wasn't worth it, I guess. All right, we're coming in for our landing. And we'll slow down this flap speed a little bit. We're just going to keep it, keep it going for a while here. Still enjoying all of the water, all the farmland. All these people get to live here. Kind of envious. I mean, I love living in Minneapolis. Actually, I'm just on the outskirts now, but... Um, outskirts of that city proper. I'm still pretty urban suburban type thing. Like we have an alley and garbage cans in the alley, but we also have like suburban houses and I love it so much. But um, I also see stuff like this. I get a bit envious. They get to be all by themselves and walk around the yards naked if they want to, which is illegal here in Minnesota, technically, but the people who try get arrested for other things. So I'm not gonna push it. But um, there, look it, you can do it there. Oh, so nice. Okay, I gotta stop looking around because I'm getting, um, not paying attention. I'm getting off course here. So let's pay attention. And I'm not even gonna adjust myself in my seat, and I'm kind of uncomfortable right now. But I'm gonna stay right where I am. And wonder what that patch of grass is on that island. You are right. Now let's get down into flap range, props forward, throttles back. And we're going to use the throttles to control our descent, but we're going to pull back on the throttle, or on the yoke, to, to um, slow down. Which will also, in turn, soften our descent as well. But So they do kind of work together, and sometimes you do do them reverse. But you, throttle is normally for descent rate, or ascent rate. And yoke, or pitch, is your speed. Right? And we need to lose more speed, so we're going to pitch up to slow down, but bring throttles back so we don't start climbing. So see how they work together. It's actually easier to do than it is to talk about. <laughs> First set of flaps. We'll do two flaps because that's what we've been doing. And like I said in the previous two legs, as long as we don't prop strike with our brakes or do a ground loop, we will be fine. I'm going to try for the best landing I can, but I'm not worried about crosswind component right now, which there isn't much of any. I'm not worried about bouncing, I'm just going to land and not crash because they have to do the leg over again. And both the prop strike and ground loop will register as a crash, so we don't want to do that. Right, let's soften it up here a little bit as we get slower, don't touch quite yet. There's ground effects and let it come down on its own. There we go, a little bit of bounce. Just one bounce, I've never done more than one bounce thankfully. Yoke, oh ground loop, no don't ground loop, oh boy don't ground loop, no 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 no. Ooh, I wish you could have seen me fight that. I don't know what happened. I know it looks smooth in the video, but that was really scary. I was fighting that with the rudders and yoke, but we did it. All right, not too bad. That's going to be it for this video, one leg per video. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next one. I'll see you then.